In your community, they say slow and steady wins the race. That's how some of nature's most fascinating creatures thrive. Chris Lopez is at the Rochester Museum and Science Center this morning. They're hosting a featured exhibit called Survival of the Slowest. Good morning, Chris. Hey, good morning, Abby. I'm taking it easy this Friday morning with all of these fellas and lady that also do so as well. I'm with Bronwyn Moore. She is an animal care specialist here. And we're gonna learn about some slow movers and how to take it easy. So what is kind of the overview of this entire feature? So a lot of people know that fast animals do better. Not always the case. We wanna make sure that those animals that are slow or really small or really weak are also represented because they're surviving and we gotta figure out how they do that. There's so much to learn from these animals. And what kind of animals are going to be throughout here when people come to see this? A lot of different types of reptiles. We have everything from lizards to snakes to turtles. We also have a couple mammals that people seem really fond of. We have a hedgehog and we have a two-toed sloth. And speaking of the sloth, mm -hmm. let's go check him out. Absolutely. So does he naturally just hang out all day? That's yeah. all he does? So sloths are really designed to hang and they're also designed to spend almost zero calories doing anything, which I think is pretty fantastic. And what's his name? Her name is Sash. Her name's Sash. Mm -hmm. Bring you guys right in close here. She is just about to turn three. Her birthday is actually on March 25th. We're gonna have a very quiet birthday party for her with a little rainbow salad. And I'm very excited for that. And how old is Sash? So she's two and a half at the moment. That does make her a baby sloth still. And I know that sloths have been around since the prehistoric times. Can you Absolutely. kind of speak to like how they've managed to just kind of hang <laughs> around when animals are fast and they're yeah. so slow? So they survive by not being spotted. Animals like squirrels that move really fast, they draw a lot of attention and they're just betting they can be faster than those predators. These guys, they know they're not gonna win that race, so instead they curl up, they stay hidden, they stay camouflaged, and they stay out of predators' mouths. And how long can she just hang from, let's say, this rope up here? Pretty much infinitely. They are actually able to sleep holding on to branches. They can just hang out, just take a nap mm -hmm. while sleep. I have actually watched her fall asleep while going to the bathroom before. <laughs> and is she the main attraction that, that people want to see here? Usually, yes, although she's a great way for us to bring in people who might not be as fond of reptiles. We can say, hey, come look at the sloth, and maybe they'll come and care about a turtle or a snake as well. That is fascinating. <laughs> I'm going to spend some time hanging out with Sash over here. She looks wonderful. She's looking like, she, and she's a two, she's a, a two-toed two -toed sloth. So if we look at her back feet, you might see three claws, but that's because all sloths have three on the back feet. We're looking at those front feet to look at that defining feature. She's got those two beautiful claws, just like that. That's amazing. Abby, I'm going to hang out with Sash, okay. getting close to her B-Day. And, uh, I'm gonna stay quiet and hang out with, look at this, oh my perfect. god, look I at this. I am obsessed with her. Listen, I, oh, stop, oh my <laughs> god. So cute, look at her Captain reaching. Hook. <gasps> Showing off those climbing skills. Her go. She is amazing. She is a natural on television, is, listen, wow. I am, I am fascinated right now. Chris, I am so jealous. So Amazing, Chris Lopez. You could just stay and in there on for the rest live of the television. I know. Look at her go. Good job, Sasha. What Proud a superstar. She Always. is. All right, Chris. We'll check back in with you in just a little bit. The world's surviving and slowest wouldn't seem like they go together when it comes to nature, but for a few special animals, it absolutely does. Chris Lopez, live at the Rochester Museum and Science Center, getting a look at some of these slow movers. Good morning, Chris. Hey, good morning, Abby. Taking it easy here at the RMSC. And we're still hanging out with the star of the show, Sash. I'm hanging out with Bronwyn right now. And we are going to feed Sash, the queen over here. Now, why is, so these are considered treats and these are all vegetarian, right? She is full vegetarian <laughs> yes. diet. One could argue even vegan. Uh, today she is getting some zucchini, some sweet potato, which is her favorite thing in the whole entire planet. Uh, some bell pepper and a little bit of spaghetti squash. And when we walk in there, 
with this. Mm -hmm. She can't see it, but the She's nostrils gonna are going to be smell kicking. Smell it, absolutely. Sloths have an incredible sense of smell. It's one of the only ways they get around. All right, because she looks like she. Oh no, she knows. <laughs> she knows already. Okay, and so she can all. Can she already smell this? Absolutely. So we can already see she is working on making her way back over this way. We start off with some zucchini, strong choice. Put it right up to her little nose. <laughs> wow. Here we go. And how long does it take for her to digest all of this? So sloths have an incredibly slow digestive system, which I'm sure is a huge surprise. Uh, it'll take at least a solid week for this to completely move through her system. Okay. I'm going to feed you <laughs> some of this right here. Here oh, you yeah. go. And you said she's a bit of a demon if you come in here <laughs> as, as calm as she is right now. Absolutely. It, what, Honestly, how do you make her that? She is super calm right now because we are bribing her with the best treats. If I had to do any maintenance in her house, like, Lord forbid I have to water her plants or change her humidifier, she usually gets pretty grouchy about that. <laughs> and you said she can hang upside down mm -hmm. like this for absolutely when sloths sleep they actually are able to lock their grip onto the branches so she can fall completely asleep and she will stay hanging until she wakes up and decides to let go and i'm gonna go yeah absolutely The crunch on her. Oh my god, one more. The one squash more. is really crunchy. The squash. We're gonna go yeah. one more. <laughs> the, cr <laughs> the crunch, Abby, on the queen herself, like just immediately wakes up when the camera is in her face. Can't ask for a she's better a, she's sloth. She's a natural star, Chris. We gotta bring her on the show. Have her fill in one of these times. Yeah, she would be a oh my she would gosh. be a great guest on Good Day Rochester. She, she could um, co anchor. Go ahead and throw her on a Zoom with Dan. <laughs> yes. I love her so much. Look at her just smiling at the camera. Chris Lopez, awesome, awesome assignment today. Very, very jealous. Um, she's just the cutest. I love her. All right, we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. We often rush through the work week. There's a lot to do, right? Heading out the door, making sure the kiddos are getting to the bus stop okay. Sometimes, though, we need to learn how to take it slow. Chris Lopez is live from the RMSC this morning, giving us some advice on how to uh, take things a little slower. You're getting some advice from Survival of the Slowest, the new exhibit there, Chris. Yes, Abby, take some advice from Mr. Pavel, is that? Mm -hmm. He is a Russian tortoise. And he is very slow. And what about this guy? How old is he actually? We're not too sure. These guys have an incredibly long lifespan. They can make it up into their 60s, no problem, if they're taken well care of. Uh, so uh, spiritually, he's an old man. <laughs> Literally, I'm not quite sure how old he is. And how often, what's his day in the life in here? Mostly this. These guys don't do a whole lot of moving around. It helps to conserve energy. It helps not to attract attention and it makes sure that they are where they're coziest. And I've kind of noticed a trend here. A lot of these guys and girls are vegetarian. Yeah. Is there a reasoning for that? So plants don't move, which generally makes it pretty easy to catch that type of food. So if you're really, really slow, that is the great thing to be on the menu. Vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna move over to something that I am very fond about, and it's, <laughs> it's a lot bigger than Mr. Pavel, and he moves probably a little faster, I'm guessing. When they're motivated, they can move pretty quickly. And <laughs> who are we going to be hanging out with? So we have two boa constrictors in here. They are seven and a half feet long. Their names are Ka and Cujo, and they're actually really nice. Cujo, mm -hmm. that's a uh, wonderful name for a snake. And why <laughs> is his name exactly Cujo? Well, uh, he's a little bit spicy, and that's okay. Not all animals need to be super friendly. 
Um, thankfully for us, as long as we're not trying to pick them up, these two are pretty fine. So if you wanted to, we can touch nice and gentle on Ka's tail here. I have never touched a snake before. <laughs> And they so feel we're just really cool, really soft. Cool. Really they buttery. They're cool. Absolutely. All right. I'm gonna take your word for it. You got it. Ah. Okay. Ah, that's. Oh wow. <laughs> so snakes are a lot squishier than people think, especially a big-bodied snake like this one. These guys are what we call an ambush predator. So those muscles are used for a burst of speed and squeezing, but they are not running marathons. They are not moving quickly. They like to sit and wait for the food to come to them. And where is this guy's origin from? Like, where does he naturally hang out at? Yeah, so these guys are found over uh, on the other side of the world. They are found more so over towards Asia, Africa kind of region. Uh, and they are also found over here in the pet trade and invasive uh, in the Everglades. And what's his normal <laughs> diet? And <laughs> what's his normal diet? <laughs> so we feed these guys what's called frozen thawed food. So we are not throwing live rats in their house, as exciting as that might be for some people. It's scary for the rat. We don't want to be mean to them in their last moments. And it's also quite dangerous for the snake. So we will be feeding them things like small uh, rabbits or medium sized rats. And they get fed once every two weeks. And is there a reason why he has turned <laughs> all of his attention from you to me? Uh, it's mostly because you are likely an unfamiliar smell. Oh, And okay. these guys have an incredible sense of smell. You can actually hear him taking a big old deep breath at the moment. It might mostly be a bit of a yawn because it, it is pretty early in the morning. That yawn sounded slightly <laughs> like something else. And, and you said, so he's taking a smell of me. He is not yeah. um, he's just angry. curious. If a snake was angry, we would see totally different body posture. He is really relaxed. He looks like cooked spaghetti at the moment. He's really limp. He's really chill. If a snake is really tense or scared, they usually start tensing right up and they'll coil and they'll get ready to defend themselves if they have to. Currently, he's like doing the snake equivalent of lounging on the couch. And so which one is this? Is this Cujo here? This one is Ka. His brother Cujo is down behind him there on the platform. And what what's the day in the life because he seems a little more um reserved mm -hmm. so most of the time these guys don't move uh there was a study done it's one of my favorite studies ever they decided to see how much do these snakes move uh their average was around one hour of movement through the 24-hour day he's mm -hmm. moving yeah so we saw him moving a little bit earlier this morning that's kind of his exercise for the day I would love to move around just one <laughs> hour for the day. I often move around for eight hours and get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Abby, I'm sure you do the same. I'm kicking it back to you in the studio. Yeah. Chris, back to you. Right. You would be right. You know, Chris, uh, when you started this shift, I think you probably didn't understand just how crazy <laughs> the, the schedule can be. That looks great. I'm with you. I would love to just relax and move barely one hour a day. I kind of get the whole spicy thing though. You know, I wouldn't like it if people were picking me up and, and poking at me either. I get it, I get it. Yeah, not when I'm trying to rest for an hour a day. If you pick me up, I'm, I'm looking at you crazy. I hear you. All right, Chris Lopez, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Marty, thank you. Some trivia for you. Did you know that sloths have been around since dinosaurs roamed the Earth? Although they may not be the fastest, their carefree mindset has allowed them to survive. Our Chris Lopez is at the RMSC with a few of these slow survivalists. A very cool exhibit that we're focusing on, Chris. Yeah, so there's the sloths, but then there's this guy. This is Grumps. He is a bearded dragon. Mm -hmm. And where does he come from? These guys are from central parts of Australia, really, really deserty region. And these guys just thrive in that hot, arid environment. And unlike the other slow movers, this guy has a protein-rich diet and not vegetarian-rich diet. Yes. What does he eat? So he's an omnivore, but he does really love his bugs. These guys eat quite a lot of different types of insects, everything from crickets to cockroaches to spiders. And even though he's on this protein-rich diet, he still doesn't really have a lot of activity going on. He's hanging around, taking it easy. Absolutely. So reptiles, even if they can move fast, that uses a lot of energy. And most of the time, they want to try and be super energy efficient. So if he doesn't have to sprint around, he likes to chillax. And so we're going to hang out with someone over there mm -hmm. that's a little bit bigger than little this guy. Bit. Absolutely. 
And what's his name? I'm, it's Iggy, Iggy right? Iggy Iguana. All right, let's go check out Iggy in his enclosure. And how big is Iggy? So Iggy is probably close to five feet at this point, although he will continue growing to be closer to six feet long when he's fully done. And I see it. This is a tortoise right here. Uh-huh. He hangs out with Iggy. Absolutely. These guys are good neighbors. They are both vegetarian. Pick They're this both up. from really tropical parts of the world down in Central and South America. Hi, buddy. So we have some treats for Iggy here, although he knows what he wants. He would like some chin rubs. Oh, the chin rubs. Yeah. So will he, similar to the sloth, eat out of my hand, or is he not too hungry he right now? He typically likes to be pet more than he likes to eat. He is like a big leathery cat. He is a big sweetheart. You can give him some shoulder rubs. He leans right into it. And you, can you pet here? <laughs> yep. That's called the dewlap. It's his big, beautiful chin flap. It's used for communication. It's also used for attracting a mate and possibly for making himself look bigger to scare a predator. And how old is he? He he doesn't look as mature as some of the others I've seen. He looks Yeah, so he's still growing. He's kind of an awkward little teenager at the moment, and he is probably at least 5 or 6 years old if I had to guess. And what kind of movement does he have? I know everyone here is a slow mm -hmm. mover but does he have a little more than the others? Totally, so it's not kind of the same deal as our bearded dragon friend where he could move really fast if he wanted to, but that uses a lot of energy and he would much rather soak up that sun like a little solar panel. And can you pet him kind of like a dog, can I do the same Absolutely. thing? Absolutely, his favorite thing in the whole world is a good shoulder rub. A shoulder rub? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> a shoulder rub, wow, you're jacked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got some muscle going on here. And is he primarily, you said that the snakes were made of primarily muscle. Is huh. he similar or is he kind of a combo? These guys do have a good amount of muscle. You can see these beautiful chunky like muscles. Thanks, bud. But these guys are mostly going to be more more typical of other mammals. So a lot like us, they've got, you know, ribs with some padding, but not as much muscle. The snakes have way more muscle than a lot of other animals do. And then I want to give a little bit of attention because he seems to want some. He's hanging around here. Absolutely. This is a tortoise. Yes. And what's his name? So this one is our friend Blanche. She is a red foot tortoise. And she is such a little character. She's obsessed with shoes. I don't know why. I don't know if they smell good or taste good to her, but she will most likely want to sniff your shoe. That holds and she may decide oh, no. to take a bite. Or she might decide she's too good for you. <laughs> Too good for me. I don't think she likes the boots. <laughs> Probably not, but that's okay. We can touch on top of her shell, and if you pet in the right spot on the back, she might do a little butt dance. Oh, <laughs> little butt dance right there. <laughs> Guys, check this out. The RMC or SC. Yep. This exhibit is going on. Kids, I know you're on break. Come check it out here. Parents, come take your kids. It's very educational. You'll learn some stuff. Brown went over here, and she's going to take you along, showing you all these slow movers. And also, take a page out of their book. Take it easy. Back to you in the studio, Abby. Good advice. Keep hanging out with my friend Tortoise over here. Chris Lopez, <laughs> thank you very much. Coming up next, a warning from local banks about recent fraudulent phishing schemes. We'll tell you how to protect yourself. We're back after this.